this Acura product um, has used it extensively in regular practice and um, has a particular case study to share with you all as well as reviewing some of the clinical evidence behind the product. And then as you can see behind you, we have uh, many stations set up um, with our helpful volunteers here to uh, do some real scanning with the product and give you an opportunity to have hands-on experience with it, try it out, and we have uh, various staff here to kind of help you and give you tips along the way. Um, I'll also say that we have a, a trial program, like a lot of companies with new technologies, a trial program where you can uh, take the product you know, with you and use it in your clinical practice to get familiar with it and see how it works for you in your practice. So um, with that, thank you for everybody for coming to this lunch. Appreciate your time and your interest. And uh, take it away, Dr. Garber. Thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate spending the lunchtime with me. We're going to just go over, it's going to be a short little talk here because I really want to get the hands-on experience uh, <clears throat> for everyone. We're going to have several stations and what you'll do is go four or five to a table and start scanning. We'll have people and then you can go to another table. There's seven different models. Obviously all of them have different anatomy, so I urge you to try it. And as far as the trial program goes, I would encourage you to try that product. That's how I got exposed to it. I was at SOAP in 2019 in Arizona and was walking and said, oh, let me, let me try it. So I got a trial sent to me and started using it. And then all of my colleagues started using the product after that. And we've been using it since. So, um, and you can actually start the trial program today if you're interested. All right, we're going to talk about a little uh, <clears throat> case report here. Uh, I am a clinical champion and consultant for uh, Rivana, and I, I want to tell you a little joke here at the beginning. Does anyone know what you call a rabbit that's an anesthesiologist? <laughs> Nobody? It's an ether bunny. <laughs> oh, okay, I know. Okay, I'm not quitting my day job, right? right okay. Um, we are a, a center of excellence for obstetric anesthesia um, at Saddleback Hospital, and when you're looking at the uh, SOAP COE qualifications, one is recommended um, ultrasound availability. So this would qualify as an ultrasound availability. Um, the thing about the Acura that I really like, it's very easy to use. It's portable. We keep it in our anesthesia cart or nearby. Those uh, 3 a.m. BMI of 50 epidurals, it really is useful, helpful, easy to use, and uh, direct and plugs in, rechargeable, without the cord or anything. I'm going to talk about uh, briefly uh, this patient, Zoe, who was told that she could not have an epidural by other practitioners, um, and how I used the Acuro to help her have a safe and, and pretty much pain-free um, <clears throat> labor. So uh, Zoe is a class three, and I was consulted her at 25 weeks. She had uh, previous significant neural deficits from a car accident 17 or so years ago, um, still with some neural deficits and morbidity secondary to the spinal trauma. Um, the interesting thing about her was that you could not really palpate her back. She still had tremendous scar tissue and pain in her back level when you went to palpate and to find the midline. Also, we'll talk about her scar was off of the midline. So just immediately disassessing the patient was difficult because you couldn't really palpate. And I discovered that the scar was uh, off of the midline. So here's a, an x-ray, a traumatic L1 vertebrae fracture. And here's the right L1 laminectomy with fusion T11 to 12 to L2, 3. So the hardware stops at that level and below, but you can still see the compression at L2, 3. And the, just the, the visualization of it was difficult on, on the x-ray looking at it and knowing with palpation it was going to be difficult as, as well. And again, the chronic pain at the level uh, of her surgery and palpation was not really practical. So what I did is I took the Acura to the doctor's uh, office down the hall. They asked me to consult on her, and so I took the Acura with me, and I was able to scan her in the doctor's office, uh, which was really nice because I was able to see pretty clearly. There was no guarantees, of course, but I was able to do a, a, a really brief 
quick exam in the doctor's office and I could see and evaluate it and I got the overlays and everything that I needed uh, to feel pretty confident that I was going to be able to do a place an epidural without a problem. Uh, that was nice for her because it gave her a little bit, uh, soothed her a little bit in knowing that she may have a good opportunity at having an epidural and I was didn't have to do anything else until she came in because I'd known, and I told my colleagues also about the scan was successful so that we were all ready to go for her. Um, again, it predicted the where I was gonna have to go and what I was gonna have to do, and it was nice because when I, then she came in in labor, and I happened to be there that day, I went and scanned her in the same thing, and was able to place uh, the epidural, um, actually the first pass, and fortunately, it worked for her entire labor, which was several hours. Um, she, printed, she presented at 38 weeks. And again, the scan that I'd done previously was still very good. And I was able to place the epidural. And she delivered um, a, self, a healthy 7-pound, seven 7-ounce seven newborn. So the conclusion with just this case, and, and among other cases, patients with high BMIs, uh, patients with difficulty. I'll even use it on patients that are very, very thin because sometimes their spaces are extremely tight and I can't really feel something really well. And the depth on the device is very accurate, as you'll see. I've really tested that out. Um, you can see the depth of your epidural space and it's going to tell you in the overlay. And it's pretty accurate, especially in these thin patients where you're worried about a post uh, uh, getting uh, into the dura that it gives you an accurate description of the depth so you can go very slowly and be accurate in getting in the epidural space. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk a little bit about the, uh, the evidence, uh, a couple of the studies that have been done. Uh, here, this was comparing the epidural depth to conventional ultrasound. And the studies have shown that the Acuro and the gold standard GE system had a high agreement, less than five millimeters different in depth measurements, and the depth me measurements were highly accurate to uh, needle insertion depth as well, and the inner space was uh, located very, very accurately. And here's, uh, when you're looking at, and this is anesthesiology news, you're looking at a reliability for cesarean delivery in obese patients, um, very handy, immediately, the one thing you're able to identify immediately is the midline, and that we know can be challenging sometimes. So when you put the device on, the first thing you're going to do is find the midline and then move from there. It's, you know, the, the way to use it when you're learning to use it, you use it on regular patients that you wouldn't normally have a, any issue with, and start using it and learn that, and once you learn to use it with that, you can move on to more advanced patients. The key with using it as with any technology or ultrasound are use small, very uh, gentle movements, small, incremental, until you get where you want to go. Uh, but in, the, in this study, it took higher first insertion success rates, less time to identify the puncture site, uh, fewer needle redirections, and lower incidence of paresthesias. With residents, it unfortunately, I, I wish I had a residency program I was working at, but the people that have used it with residency programs, and we know, you know, learning an epidural is, is, is not an easy task, and if you can start and immediately identify the midline, that's a big thing, positioning the midline, finding that. So you're gonna be able to do that, and this, and this study showed that with the residents, there was a greater first uh, insertion success rate, decrease in needle insertions, 58% reduction in difficult spinal. So it definitely helped the residents in placing their spinals and epidurals. Uh, this was from the UK. Uh, they had uh, four studies, including two randomized control trials. And basically, the, the narrative was that the acro accurately located the intervertebral space, required few needle insertions uh, with palpation alone in people with obesity, irrespective of provider experience level or type of neuroaxial anesthesia performed. Okay, we're gonna uh, you know, break out here soon in our groups. I'm just gonna go over briefly um, how I use it, and there are different ways to use it, and just give you an idea of what you're gonna be looking for. 
Now it is available to use in a sterile sleeve if you like. I personally don't use it like that. I use, I use it as a scalp mechanism and what I do is I get my patient all set for her, her epidural. I open my epidural tray, have it open already. I have my sterile gloves and I do a swipe with a chloroprep first and then I do a scout and identify the spot. I just, it, it's not a sterile procedure, I just do it so it's clean. Now the spinal navigator, the little individual piece which is disposable at the end, which you'll be using here, that, that portion comes sterile, but it's also, so it's clean, and then I use that to locate the spot, and I'll show you how we do that. And then I'm ready to go, I use another chloroplep, and I go ahead and start my procedure. So the, the great thing about the Acuro for me, I found, I wasn't trained in, in ultrasound uh, when I was trained, so raw ultrasound images, I, I, do, I did, did learn to do tap blocks, so I am doing some ultrasound, but I'm not that sophisticated with the Acuro. It has these very accurate, we call the artificial intelligence uh, overlays. So one of the first things when you're gonna see on the left-hand side here, you're gonna see that's the spinous process, and that white line that's your, what you're gonna line up with the bottom arrow, the little arrow on the bottom where the other uh, vertical white, horizontal white line is. And that, those depths on the right, that 2.6 centimeters, that is the distance to the spinous process, okay? So that's, you may see that when you start and if you're in the right place, and the first thing you wanna do is identify the midline. You don't have to look for the blue or the orange overlay. You want to identify the midline, and then you can start, once you're in the midline, you can start scanning Caudat or Cephalad to find your, your right spot there. It also has indications. There's a depth indicator on the left you can change, the brightness indicator. It also has the ability to take a little movie, cine, uh, a cine format or picture, so you can demonstrate to someone else that wants to use it a, a, a two-second clip of what you're going to be looking for. And this is what you're looking for is this orange overlay and the distance on the right, the 3.6 to the uh, epidural space interlaminar uh, identification there. And this is what you're looking to do is line the red line up. The red line is gonna be lined up, that orange overlay and that distance on the right there is actually gonna be very accurate because uh, I've, I've tested that out and looked at your, as your needle is going in, how many centimeters. And what's, one of the things I found with use with this in patients with very high BMIs is that with a little compression, uh, you can get a distance. And I really don't like using the longer needles. I just don't find them that useful and they're a little more difficult for me to maneuver. And I found by using this device, I really have very, very rarely had to use a very long epidural needle because with a little compression on the device, I'm able to find an accurate depth and, and get into the epidural space with our conventional epidural kits. Um, here's how you mark the skin. And uh, on the left-hand side, you can see that's the position that I use uh, for my fingers. They kind of go in, it's almost like a little, little tiny grooves that go in there. And I would urge you to use it in that way because once you find the spot, you don't have to make any other movements by withdrawing your hand or moving it around. You're just gonna have your fingers there and then you actually push that small clip off of the device and it will mark. And in the middle picture, you don't actually really have to actually do that if you do it. And I'll show you how we do it. You'll be able to mark the spot without any problem. And then in the, in the third, um, on the, on the right, what I do is I don't, I don't actually use my thumb. I take a needle and I take the hollow end of the needle, the round end of a needle um, that's still covered, and I use that round to mark in the middle. There's four points and I mark right in the middle, and that's where I'm gonna go and put, and put my, uh, introduce my epidural needle or my spinal.